Hello everybody and welcome to the Sober Bliss podcast with me, Gail. Happy whatever day you're listening to today's podcast. I hope that you are having a really lovely day. And if you're not, then hopefully this will inspire you and lift your mood and bring a little bit of joy and happiness to your day. Because I think it's important that we do embrace joy and happiness as much as we possibly can on this journey. Let's face it, there's a lot of crap going on in the world right now. So it's in our own interest. I think it's very important to seek joy and a little bit of light as much as we possibly can. So this week's podcast is kind of an extension of what I talked about last week which is on the theme of doing things that you love, doing things that light you up and bring you joy and I want to dig a little bit deeper on you know what we talked about last week and today's podcast is based on a newsletter actually that I sent out Um, By the time you're listening to this, it would have been a couple of weeks ago, perhaps. So if any of what I'm about to say sounds familiar, then do keep listening because often we need to hear the same thing many times in order to absorb the information or for it to land in the right place. Um, You know, we need to hear it in different formats, read it, listen to it, watch it, those kind of things. Um, So if the words sound familiar, then do, as I said, keep listening. Because maybe you didn't get an aha moment from the newsletter you read. Then you just might, from listening to the words today. And obviously I'm not reading this word for word. So what you're about to hear will probably end up being nothing (laughs) like the newsletter that you read because as you know I tend to go on off on a bit of a tangent with these podcasts and if you've got absolutely no idea what I'm talking about then you've never seen the newsletter and that could be because a you're not signed up to receive my newsletters and in which case go and sign up right now well listen to the podcast first and then go and sign up and I'll leave the link in the show notes. Um, And actually, if you are already um, a subscriber, if you have signed up and you're still thinking, I don't know what you're talking about, Gail, don't recognize any kind of newsletter about doing things you love at all, then do check your spam. In fact, this goes for everybody, whether you are about to sign up or you are already on my mailing list, please check your spam and your junk folder because I know that some of my emails end up in there, unfortunately. And unless you move them from there, you know, if you've got Gmail, you can click on not spam or whatever it is, but move them out of there, put them in your inbox, whitelist them, add me to your contacts. So that means that you carry on receiving the email so they won't bounce they won't land in spam because of course you want to keep receiving all the goodness that I send to you um so yeah again if you're not signed up then please do so I promise you won't regret it (laughs) and you'll get lots of lovely things from me when you do sign up including there's two things you can sign up for right now a lovely guided visualization which will help you through wine o'clock along with a quick guide to help you with the witching hour and also you will or you can choose to get um, a little workbook and planner to bring the magic back into your sobriety wherever you are on your journey so I put the link to those two things in the show notes so if you haven't got them yet then sign up and get them and check your spam okay so following on from last week's podcast which as I said in the beginning of this one was about doing more of what you love to make your journey to 
um, an alcohol free life um, as in uh, inspiring and uplifting and lovely as possible because when we do more of what we love there is less room in our lives and less need actually for numbing it out with alcohol so if you can imagine i don't know some scales a set of scales kitchen scales we want to pile on the good stuff and tip the scales in our favor as much as possible or another way to think of it is i don't know imagine ourselves as a cup yes i'm going to do the fill your cup analogy because we really do need to fill our cups first (laughs) with all the goodness that there is available to us so there is literally no room in our cup or in our lives for anything else including alcohol so I talk about this a lot do more of the good stuff which will crowd out the bad stuff which is alcohol and the more we fill ourselves up the more we squeeze the wine out of our lives so there is simply no room for it and it sounds very simple and it is in some ways but I know it's not necessarily easy which is why I'm here to help you so don't forget if you're struggling with any aspect of your journey to alcohol freedom or your sobriety in general any aspect of it at all then do get in touch We have a gorgeous membership which is there to support you. I also do one-to-one coaching. So get in touch, book a call and I'll talk to you about that a bit more at the end. Um, That's what I'm here for. I'm here to help you. So don't be afraid. Reach out and ask me and I'll be there to support you. Because living an alcohol-free life is not something that happens by accident we have to make an effort because for reasons that I talked about in last week's podcast um you know living a life that we love doing things that we love being a little bit selfish and prioritizing ourselves it doesn't come naturally to us as mums as women um but We also know that when we do make the effort, everything changes. And that's what we want. We want everything to change. And I know it's scary, but it's also wildly exciting. Um, And I had a bit of an aha moment around this myself, which is why I initially felt inspired to write the email. And it's why that I'm talking to you now, because... I had the best morning when I wrote the email and I've continued to have the best mornings since uh, lately. Um, And they've been making such a difference to my mood and to my energy because as you may or may not know, I did have a bit of a a wobble. I don't want to keep using that word, but I read a blog from somebody who also used the word wobble I felt a bit shaky a bit unsteady I wasn't entirely happy with the way things were going and it did affect my mood and my energy a lot um so now that I've worked through that and I have been allowing myself to spend the time doing what I want to do what I love to do um my mood and my energy have been you know vastly improved So what does that look like? Well, I've always had a pretty good morning routine, but lately I've just really allowed myself to indulge completely (laughs) in what it is I want to do. So my mornings have been spent in my living room with the fairy lights on, uh, my favourite soundtrack, Um, which I'll link to, it's so appropriate for this time of year, Um, my favourite incense, and I've put a candle on, and I've been writing. And that's the thing that's been bringing me so much joy lately, because I've struggled with 
allowing myself to write you know in the past and probably I don't know you might have received an email from me last year to say that I'm writing a book and I'm still writing a book because I haven't allowed myself to do it um so that's why I've been struggling with my writing not because I don't like it and I don't want to do it and I have to force myself to do it but because I I love to do it you know it's not brilliant I do realize that there's a lot of improvement but in some ways I've been feeling guilty about spending time doing this kind of writing and telling myself all sorts of reasons why I shouldn't be doing it and if you listen to last week's podcast then you know uh, that this is very common and it has to change so as I say I do love writing you know I write all the time for all sorts of different things but when it comes to writing something a bit more personal a bit for me something as big and scary as a book I'm working on a book proposal at the moment, which is really big and scary, but at the same time, really exciting. I haven't felt that I've been allowed to do it. Um, So I haven't been allowing myself the time and the space to do it properly, you know, just to let the words flow and to not worry about the outcome or the result, but just enjoy the process. Um, as I said, I love to write and yes, there's so much room for improvement, but I do feel at peace when I'm in my little world with the candles and the fairy lights and the incense writing. And because of that, I find that afterwards I am much more present and focused and feel so much happier and lighter you know, when I've written something. But I haven't been allowing myself to do it. You know, something stops me. If I have to write, I don't know, um, a pin for Pinterest or something, then it's work and it's something I have to do, something I enjoy doing, but it's, you know, it's work. So I just sit down and I do it and it's fine. But when I want to try and do something which is not really considered work as such, when it's something that is a lot more personal and maybe, you know, a bit deeper or difficult to write, um, then something stops me. And I've been trying to work out what it is. And it reminds me of um, something that I read in... Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert. She talks about um, what uh, Pema Chodron says about people and their meditation. And she says, people quit as soon as things aren't easy anymore. As soon as it gets painful. They quit as soon as they see something in their minds that scares them or hurts them so they miss the good part the wild part the transformative part the part when you push past the difficulty and enter into some raw new unexplored universe within yourself and that's exactly what I've been doing with my writing and it's probably what you've been doing too which is what I want to talk to you about in this podcast. So the minute that, for me, it's writing, for you, it could be something else, it could be your sobriety, which I'm going to ask you about, the minute it gets a bit challenging, a bit difficult, a little bit scary, um, the minute you have to face something that you know is going to make a big difference, then all of a sudden there's something much more important to do and I recognize that in myself so much so if I had a morning free and I thought oh gosh yeah I can sit and do my writing this morning then often many times you know I had a sudden urge 
you know, to do something else. All of a sudden, it was really urgent that I, I don't know, reorganized my cupboard. Or I had to watch that documentary on TV. My bathroom had to be cleaned at that very moment. And all my jumpers had to be pulled out and folded like, you know, they do or they did in the sweater shop. So that's why a year since I declared to the universe that I was going to write a book, it's still not written. Um, But I do have, on the whole, really lovely tidy cupboards. (laughs) My jumpers look amazing. (laughs) Um, But that's not really helping. That's not helping me move in the direction that I want to move in. It's not helping me to get where I want to go. Um... And obviously, if I want to write, then I have to write. If I want to write a book, it's not going to do it on its own. I have to write and keep writing. Um, even when it gets difficult, because when you push past that difficulty and you get to the good part, the wild part, it feels amazing. Um, so why wasn't I allowing myself? Why wasn't I pushing myself? Um, and it gets back to kind of what we said or what I rather talked about and you listened to last week. It's about I, I knew that I needed the support to help me through it. I needed guidance. I needed advice. Uh, but not in a kind of a, I don't know, like here's a great time hack kind of a way. Like do this and then you'll be able to write your book. I didn't need more hours in the day. I didn't need, you know, a better schedule or more structure. Um, I didn't need to go and live in a, a hut in the woods for three months. Although that would be amazing. Not very practical. What I did need was gentle encouragement and support. And I kind of, you know, you can do this if you really want to. And I'm here to help you do it kind of a way. And this is so much like I was talking about last week in the podcast about getting the proper support and not soldiering on by yourself. Because it is so easy just to say, well, you know, it's, it's too difficult right now. It's not the right time. I'm too busy, it's too hot, it's too cold, it's Monday, it's the holidays, can't possibly write my book, can't possibly quit drinking right now um, and do something else, like tidy your cupboards. Um, (laughs) So I recognise that in myself and I did get the support and the support came in the way of um, a wonderful book written by a gorgeous writer called Beth Kempton and the book that I bought I'll put the link to her website and the book in the show notes. It's called The Way of the Fearless Writer. And there's also a two-week writing course to go with the book, which is just amazing. And that's what I needed. I needed, and she is so lovely and encouraging and supportive. That's what I needed to help me just sit down and write and be okay with it. You know, I haven't written a book yet, obviously, but I'm enjoying the writing process again and I'm not feeling guilty for writing something that isn't, I don't know, a shopping list or something to do for work. And I've got work in inverted commas here. But I have to say that even just buying the book, even just knowing that the support was on its way, felt so much better. And I bought the book on pre-order, so I had to wait for it to come out. But I was just really looking forward to it. I was getting excited. And I was beginning to already feel so much better about my writing. Because there is something about having the support in place, whatever it's for. And knowing that it's on its way and that you'll soon be looked after and taken care of and guided and supported that makes you immediately feel so much better about yourself. That's what I experienced when I, you know, invested and bought the book. And I've seen it myself as well after 
chatting to clients about one-to-one coaching or joining the membership and when they book the coaching or when they go ahead and say yeah I'm joining the membership you can see them visibly relax and there's a softening and a and a lightning I suppose often there's tears as well (laughs) but there's hope and there's joy and people do tell me that immediately they feel much better knowing that they're going to be fully supported and guided so I know what it's like to be in that position it is in itself really transformational um so I have to say that I've not read that much of the book yet um what I have read so far though has been you know really eye-opening for me and I can already feel a shift happening so you know when you really commit to something um even though you know it's going to be tough and you know there's lots of learning to do and opening up to be done it just feels right well that's been my experience so far of the book course the writing course and again this is my own experience of something that I'm going through right now but for you it could be anything you know when you've decided to I don't know obviously quit drinking that's a massive one but it could be um leave your job or update your CV or or take a course or learn a skill or get counselling, whatever. Um, It just feels right when you know that you're finally doing the thing that you really want to do and there's somebody there to help you through it. That's totally been my experience so far and I feel so much better about my writing in fact, I can't hardly stop <laughs> um, than I have done in such a long time. So I'm allowing myself to do the thing that I want to do. And, you know, again, for you, it could be anything at all. With no kind of expectations, no perfect end in sight, no agenda other than to just enjoy the process and see what happens and what happened one morning when I was working through one of the exercises in the book was I felt really inspired to write the email that you may or may not have seen and if you did see it you're probably realizing by now that what I'm saying to you is nothing like the email (laughs) because I do go off on a tangent Um, but anyway I felt really inspired to write the email and so inspired to talk to you today because one of the questions in the book course that came up that morning was about choosing. Choosing to write and choosing the writing life. Now my absolute dream, uh, and I've said it before, is to go and live in a cabin in the woods and write books. That is my dream. Like when I'm 70 or something, I can see me sitting in a cabin in the woods writing books and having a writing life. Um, But actually, why do I have to wait until I'm 70 to do that? Why am I not choosing a writing life now? Obviously, that doesn't mean running off to a cabin in the woods. I can choose a writing life within the life that I've got Um, but why have I not been doing it why have I not been choosing to write now in the way that I want to why have I been choosing something else over writing like tidying up my jumpers or cleaning my cupboards uh, and other trivial things Um, I will say that I never ever choose ironing overwriting because that's just the worst thing in the world ever I don't think I've ironed anything since 2005 I do have an ironing board but it doubles as my 
well, it doesn't double as anything. It's only got one use, which is my writing desk in the winter because it's too cold in my office. Um, but the point is that I've been choosing to do other things as opposed to to writing. So I've been allowing other things to get in the way of me spending time focusing on doing the thing that I really want to do at the moment and it's not just stuff like actions or activities it's you know that eat away at your time so that I don't have time to write that was a massive excuse you know why haven't you written any book today Gail well you know I've been so busy doing everything else I've just not had the time to do it which I'm learning now is nonsense because if it was that important to me then I would do it first before anything else but it's not just the time stuff it's the other things that get in the way like the fear of failure um, not feeling worthy you know massive imposter syndrome who am I to write you know Feeling like writing is not proper work. It's a bit of an indulgence, a bit of a fancy. Um, and maybe a lack of confidence, st stupid limiting beliefs that have really kept me stuck and kept me from allowing myself to do the thing that I want to do. But at the same time, I realized that unless I get on with the business of writing, you know, unless I do the work, unless I do the thing that I really, really want to do in, um, in a mindful, focused, intentional way, then I'm never going to work through the issues that have been keeping me stuck, you know, the the fear and the, the lack of confidence and the imposter syn syndrome are not suddenly going to disappear overnight they're not going to work themselves out magically and it's only through the process of writing or learning the guitar or learning to knit or quitting drinking uh, and committing to showing up for ourselves in this way that are we able to work through the issues that have been you know keeping us stuck that have been troubling us so that we can get better at it you know if I want to be a good writer then I have to write simple as that um I have to prioritize it and make it a way of life which is really what I want I don't want to be writing on the edges I don't want to be sneaking in five minutes here and ten minutes there I don't want to leave it until everything else is done because I know that I will just be too tired or I'll think oh what's the point you know and I just won't do it and it's the opposite of what I want you know it could be anything for me, as I said, it's writing, but for you, it could be anything. If you really want to, I don't know, bake amazing cupcakes, then you can't just sit around thinking about it and reading the tutorials and watching the YouTube videos. At some point, you're going to have to go into the kitchen and bake a cake. <laughs> if you want to sail a boat, then you're going to have to get in the water. Uh, if you want to be a pole dancer, then you're going to have to go to classes. You can't just hope that if you think about it hard enough, then magically you'll be able to do it. You have to prioritize the activity. You have to prioritize the learning and the practice and give it the time and the space it deserves until it becomes part of who you are and until it is you know, the lifestyle that you want. Um, so for me, in my writing experience, I've only been properly dedicating, properly allowing myself 
this writing time in the morning but it's completely transformed how I feel about it now you know there's obviously a lot a long way to go I'm not gonna become an amazing writer after two weeks of exercises (laughs) but I already feel better about it I already feel excited about it I already feel that um it's something that I do and it doesn't matter what it is that I produce the fact that I am there writing is the most important thing in the world and it makes me feel so good after I've allowed myself to write so you know I could and I did spend all my time wishing I was writing, spend all my time worrying about being a rubbish writer um, or a fraud or gosh, what if, you know, I fail and people think every word is just a load of crap. Or I could pour all of this energy into actually doing the thing and, and working through the fears and yeah producing something which is a bit rubbish but learning from it and moving on and, and keeping going so instead of allowing fear and worry and not feeling deserving and worthy and good enough to keep me stuck I've been working through it, I've been writing, I've been showing up day after day and just doing the thing that I really want to do, which has taken me every single day one step closer to where it is that I want to be. And this process that I'm going through right now of writing reminds me so much of the process that I went through before I quit drinking and that was the aha moment that's the thing that I wanted to share with you and ask you about um because before I quit drinking I was exactly the same about living a sober lifestyle than I have been about having a writing life you know I would wish I would hope I would dream I would imagine myself waking up sober I would you know try and feel or imagine what it would be like to stay up late watching something amazing on tv or a sunset and not being half cut I wondered what do people do on a weekend when they don't drink um you know I would dream and and read the blogs and watch the videos But when it came to doing it, all of the excuses and the reasons kicked in. Why I couldn't do it, why it wasn't the right time, um, why it was too hard. And it just wasn't me. I was not meant to be that person who has smoothies and drinks tea all afternoon. You know, that wasn't me. Turns out it totally is me. But I had to do it in order to become it so that's the thing that I want to ask you about today that's what I want you to think about you know to go away and journal on or to ponder as you have a walk in the woods you're obviously here listening to this podcast and hopefully on my email list because you want to stop drinking you want to live an alcohol free life you want to live the most you know wonderful fulfilled aligned lifestyle without alcohol that makes you feel good makes you feel inspired fully present and the truest version of yourself don't you that's what you want you want to stop drinking and have a great life that's what we all want Uh, or maybe you've already stopped drinking that bit's done but you're still struggling with having a great life maybe you're not doing the thing that you want to do that's going to help everything fall into place you know maybe you're struggling with 
not drinking because that's all you've done. You've just removed the alcohol. You haven't done anything else. Um, so, you know, whatever the reason is that you're here, um, I want to ask you, are you here because you haven't been choosing your sobriety? And if so, why? Why are you not choosing a sober life? Why are you not choosing to live the most amazing, uplifting, inspiring, alcohol-free life that is available to you? And why are you choosing something else ahead of your sobriety? Why are you choosing something else ahead of choosing to live the most inspiring, uplifting, amazing, alcohol-free life. And by things, I don't just mean, you know, why are you not reading the books, but are choosing to organise your jumper drawer instead. (laughs) I don't just mean that. I mean, why are you choosing to focus your energy on all the reasons why you can't quit right now so why is worrying about your stressful job getting in the way why is you know the arguments that you have with your partner or the kids' tantrums or your teenager's moods or why is the worrying about what people think of you why is the holiday the weekend the play dates the anxiety the difficult day the great day The party, the lazy Sunday, the it's my identity or I don't know how to have fun. I don't know who I'll be or I don't know how I'll cope. What will my friends say or my classic? What do people do all weekend when they're not drinking? Why are you choosing to focus your energy on that? Why is that more important than choosing to do something about it and basically that's what we're doing we're worrying about all of these things and allowing them to get in the way of us doing the thing that we most want to do in the world and then wondering why we're still stuck we're still stuck in that awful cycle of you know drink feel crap and then drink some more because we feel crap And there's so much more waiting for you than that awful cycle. So, you know, why are you not prioritizing quitting drinking? And there's no judgment here. I don't want you to write in and say, well, you don't understand or it's this or it's that. This is something for you to work through. And I'm here to help you if you want me to. But I don't want you to feel like I'm being a bit mean or putting you on the spot because I'm not. Because I was exactly in that place. I wasn't prioritizing quitting drinking, even though I knew it was the thing that I most wanted to do in the whole wide world. And it's like I talked about in the podcast last week. I was not taking responsibility for my own sobriety Uh, so much that I was hoping for something awful to happen where I wouldn't have a choice and that is a scary place to be in and that's where I was so I know exactly what you're going through but I also know that there is a spark there somewhere there is a part of you deep down you know once you get over the you know, thinking badly of me for making you think like this, you're hopefully thinking, you know what? There's some truth in what Gail's saying right now. And that's where I want you to focus your energy and your attention. I don't want you to keep focusing your energy on why you can't quit drinking or why you can't be sober and happy, why it's not the right time why it's too difficult right now, why you couldn't possibly 
get the help and support you need. I don't want you to focus on that. I want you to focus on how you're going to do the thing that you want to do, which is to stop drinking. I want you to think about why have you not been choosing yourself? Why have you not been choosing to live your life the way you want to, which is a life that is in true alignment with the person who you are deep down? Why have you not been choosing yourself? A simple question, but getting to the answer I know is not easy. Why are you not choosing to put yourself first? To put your energy, as I said, into finding ways to do the thing that you most want to do. And it could be as simple as buying a book or taking a course or committing to doing one thing that brings you joy every single day. To focus on yourself and to allow yourself to feel good again. It could be focusing on putting the energy into finding the support working through the issues and challenges that are keeping you stuck. If you know that's what you need to do, then why are you not choosing to do that? And again, I ask with no judgment at all. Why are you not making yourself a priority? Above all of the things, so above the folding of jumpers and complaining about your stressful job why are you not prioritizing this way of life for yourself and choosing yourself and when we're not prioritizing doing the thing that we want to do what kind of messages are we sending to ourselves so no judgment as I said I don't want you to write in with the answer. I want you to go away and think about it with as much love and kindness and gentleness as you can possibly give yourself. Just something for you to think about and ponder. And I would recommend that you do this. You do spend a bit of time reflecting. Think about, you know, why are you not choosing yourself with whatever it is that, you know, might be coming up for you right now? So it could be, why are you not choosing sobriety right now? Why are you, are you not choosing to seek the help you need or to prioritize finding a way to live alcohol free? Or it could be something entirely different that you really want to do, but you haven't been allowing yourself to take the plunge or to commit to it or to do the work required um, and be kind when you think about this be gentle you know take a flask of tea to the beach or go and sit in the woods or go and light a candle in your bedroom and sit with a notebook but give yourself the time and the space to think about this as I said with all the kindness and love that you deserve. And remember that if it does get difficult, if you do realise, actually, I do need support with this, if it's to do with quitting drinking, I can totally help you. If it's to do with something else, then I might not be able to. <laughs> but if you do need support with living an amazing, uplifting, inspiring, beautiful, alcohol-free life, then I'm here for you, for all of it. And not in a, like I said at the beginning, here's a brilliant hack, or go and live in a, a hut for three months and you'll be fine. Not in that kind of way. But if you know me, then I'm here for you in the most loving, gentle, kind, nourishing and supportive way because that's just how I do what I do. So you can do it 
if you really want to, if you want to choose to live alcohol free, then I'm with you 100%. So come and talk to me about it. That's what I'm here for. Which brings me back to something I mentioned right at the start, which is the Friday cup of chat. I ran these, I think it was last year for a couple of months and they were really good. Um, Really enjoyed them and I met so many amazing, lovely people and I'm running them again. I have a few free 45 minute one-to-ones available every Friday um, where you can come to me with anything. So if what you've been listening to in the podcast has really brought up some emotion and you want support with it and you want help with it then book the cup of chat that means we have a chat together with a cup of tea or coffee or whatever um so yeah book the call come to me with your struggles with your questions and I will do my best to help you through that on the call And if I can't help you fully on the call, then obviously we can talk a bit more about the support that's available to you. But I'm there for you to pour your heart out to. You know, I'm a shoulder to cry on. I'm there to listen and to help. So let's meet and let's chat. I will put the link in the show notes as I said they're every Friday of just a few a week and they'll probably run until the end of the year I'm not sure I might carry them on depends on you know the the uptake but the chats are there to help you to get the support you need and to get past the thing that's holding you back from living this alcohol-free life that you've been dreaming of. So I'll be there to help you get past the need to tidy your jumpers instead of committing to sobriety, if you know what I mean. Um, I'll be there to help you find ways to get over yourself in the nicest possible way. Because once you do, then the transformation is just amazing. Um, I'm there to help you look for the answers to your struggles elsewhere, not at the bottom of a glass. Um, and I know it's scary. I know that the thought of reaching out and asking and talking and, you know, sharing what's been going on is scary. And I also know that the thought of not drinking when that's all you know is scarier still but I'm there to help you you don't have to feel afraid anymore and you don't have to do it alone because you can quit drinking you absolutely can and you can feel good about it that's what I'm all about helping you quit drinking in a way that feels good And it's something that I do a lot. I do all the time. It's my job. It's what I'm here for. It's what I love. It's what I'm good at. So book the call. Let's have a chat. And let's get you doing the thing that you most want to do in the world. So I really hope that you've left this podcast today feeling hopeful, inspired, excited and also safe and secure knowing that you can do this if you choose to the help and support is there for you so I do look forward to meeting you I do hope you've enjoyed today's podcast and if you've got any thoughts or any questions then send me an email or leave a comment at the bottom of the blog all the links that you need are in the show notes Thank you so much for listening and have a wonderful day. Bye for now.